But I'm not trying to figure out why my channel is such a sausage fest. I like to answer questions I get on YouTube, so let's have at it. Hey Sean, I can't remember you talking about Slash's guitar playing. Are you a fan? If not, what the hell is wrong with you? So let's start with the good. I mean, Slash is obviously an incredible guitar player. I feel his tone is amazing. He kind of has like the quintessential Les Paul rock tone. But if you were to make like a chart where the X axis would be my interest in music and the Y axis being Guns N' Roses coolness, I think you would find that as I was getting into good music, I started doing that at the exact moment, the intersection of when Guns N' Roses stopped being cool. And I remember, I think I was probably in like sixth grade when the November Rain video came out. And there's that iconic moment where Slash emerges from like this church in the middle of the desert and there's these swooping crane shots and he's got a cigarette and he's just like hitting this like really high soaring solo in front of this church and there's nobody around. And even as a child, I was like, this is a little much. So uh, I can't, every time I see Slash, I always think of the crane shot just swirling around him in the middle of the desert, just playing his Les Paul with a cigarette coming out of his mouth. So I'm, I'm sorry. I just can't really get into Slash because I cannot shake that image from my head. But definitely a good player. What do you like most, produce or play music? I think the short answer would probably be that I like the production aspect of a little more. I think it's just cool because you can be so creative in a lot of different ways. However, if you get with the right group of musicians, nothing beats playing music with other people. I think, Sadly, in my own experience, it's been kind of few and far between where I've had like a really awesome experience where like, you know, everybody kind of puts their egos aside and whatever and just kind of has fun. But if you can get together like a cool group of friends and just jam out, that's still to me kind of like the best time you can have. But uh, I just personally really enjoy the production element a little bit more on average. What do you think of GNL and the GNL tribute? So I think GNL are probably. You know, I'm kind of surprised that at this point in time, GNL isn't really bigger than it is right now. So it's kind of maintained the same level stature as far as like the, the guitar community and the manufacturing community goes, because I think they really make incredible guitars, especially uh, the tribute one for the money is like a pretty awesome one. And uh, the GNL tallies and stuff. I've only really played like the GNL tallies a few times and they absolutely stack up neck to neck with the Fenders. Uh, they're awesome guitars and I mean, it's, it's not really a mystery why. They're, they're essentially created by like the same masterminds and the same building processes and stuff like that. So I would have thought the GNL would have been kind of neck and neck with like the other big manufacturers by now. But uh, for whatever reason, they're still kind of a niche thing, I guess. I mean, they're still pretty widely known. But uh, yeah, I definitely love GNL stuff. The tributes, if you ever get a chance to play them, uh, I think they're definitely up there for the best in class in their price point too. So uh, yeah, definitely check them out. You're a jazzy player most of the time, so what do you think of Carlos Santana? So I actually have a Carlos Santana story, and it dates back to, God, I think it was probably like seven or eight years ago. I was living in Las Vegas and working at Guitar Center, and we were kind of hanging out there. Uh, it was me and one of my best friends, Cody, and all of a sudden, Carlos Santana walks in, and he's with like his crew, like a couple bodyguards, whatever, uh, his percussion player too, and stuff like that. And everyone's like, oh my God, it's Carlos Santana. And everyone was like terrified to talk to him because he's such a legend. And at this point, obviously I knew Carlos Santana, and I think this was, he was still kind of like riding the wave from, uh, from Supernatural, the album that he had with like all those big hits and stuff like that which I was not a huge fan of. In fact, I think uh, Smooth featuring Rob Thomas is probably one of my least favorite songs of all time. In fact, just the phrase featuring Rob Thomas kind of triggers me in a lot of ways. But uh, anyway, so I wasn't a huge fan of his playing, but obviously he's a legend. So we went up to him and it's like, wow, like Carlos Santana, like it's such an honor to meet you. And we just kind of started talking to him and I gotta say, he was the coolest guy. Like as far as celebrity encounters, hands down the number one guy. He, he kind of asked us a lot of questions and me and Cody were just kind of up and coming musicians. So we're like, hey, you know, we're working on some things. If you have any advice, like we're all ears, like we would love to hear it. And I kid you not for 20 minutes, at least 20, might've been even more like 30 minutes. He just kind of like just sat with both of us and kind of just gave us like a lot of like, wisdom like he was just like just giving us like advice and stuff like that and kind of like some of his his personal experiences at one point his bodyguards were like bro carlos we gotta like we gotta go we gotta get out of here and he's like no i'm good go ahead i'll meet up with you later like 
the exact job that his bodyguards were there were to keep guys like us from like talking to him. They're just like, okay, whatever. And they left and he was just like kicking it with us. And I'll never forget. He goes, cause he even like learned our names, like within the conversation, he goes, Sean, put your hand out. Right? So I'm like, okay. And I put my hand out and he waits a minute and then he quickly grabs it and he like crushes my hand and like lifts it up. He's like, every note you play for the rest of your life, I want you to play it like this. And I was just like, oh my God, like Carlos Santana, what? <laughs> Squeezing my hand. So ever since then, I've just had such a massive amount of respect for the guy because he could not have been nicer. He couldn't have been more gracious. And I've, before that, I wasn't necessarily a big fan, but now like every time I see him, I just remember that. And I really have learned to appreciate him in a new light because he was just such a cool guy. So for listening homework, I'm going to throw you to a lesser known Carlos Santana thing. And yes, that is him wearing a fanny pack, which we're not going to talk too much about right now because he's a cool guy. But uh, also too, another thing about his playing is he is a great example of a guy who found out what he does well and he just banged it home, right? Like he never tried to get too experimental with anything. He never tried to do anything that he wasn't. He's just like, a dude who can freaking shred the minor pentatonic scale and make it soar on that PRS. And more power to him, you know? I'm gonna link you to this video because it's a little something different than kinda, it, some of his stuff can get kind of repetitive. Like you always, he's got such a signature sound that it's almo it almost kinda becomes repetitive. But this is a little bit different because it's a Beatles cover and he's playing a little more acoustic. So uh, anyways, mad props to Carlos Santana. Uh, if you have any questions, hit me up in the comments or on Twitter or Instagram, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks.